Hello, Sammy. Hello, Hi. Annie. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me a bit about your background, your family background? When were you born first? And can you tell me just to follow that? Now? Yeah, I was born in Japan, a city called Kanazawa, uh, 1952. And then I was staying in Kanazawa until the age of 18. Mm. And then moved to Tokyo to study uh, Russian language. And then I went back to my hometown for a couple of years. And then I had opportunity to go to Moscow to study uh, one year. Mm -hmm. And then I met my ex-husband and a couple of years later, which is uh, 1978, I came to uh, UK and then got married. Can you tell me a bit about your childhood? Yes, uh, I was born, uh, <laughs> I carry on, yeah. yes, um, I had I have three brothers, well I had three brothers and then I am youngest in a family and the only daughter. So my father and the mother and the three brothers and then myself and that we are living uh, next to the Japanese railway factory and then my father was working for Japanese railway. And the mother was a typical, uh, at the time, uh, that era, the uh, housewife. And she never worked in, in a sense, she go to the office or whatever, she never worked, but she worked at home. Um, she was very good at uh, sewing a kimono and also she used to teach flower arrangement at home and she also taught how to sew kimono for young ladies and so on. So she, before she got married she, she finished school and then she was a uh, couple of years preparing to become a good wife and then she was uh, married by mm. arrangement. So often in our family, the joke, uh, my mother had uh, three sisters and uh, they had arranged arrange the day to meet um, this uh, future husband or whatever. And then my father went to this meeting and then saw three sisters until wedding day he didn't know which daughter to get married. <laughs> so anyway, you know, her life wasn't so easy because my father was at the time, um, you know, working for Japanese railway as an engineer and he became unionist and he organized the strike and things. So um, his salary was never increased for 10 years or something. So it's financially, family was, uh, you know, uh, quite uh, tough. So my mother was uh, supporting family finance by sewing a kimono and uh, teaching a flower arrangement because um, she couldn't uh, go to work because at the time um, my mother's era going to work was uh, almost, you know, it's uh, unacceptable as a society, so women have to stay at home to look after children and so on. So th my mother's, uh, you, you know, uh, supporting a, a family that way, uh, but she had a quite tough life. My father was, uh, as said, uh, I said earlier on, it's a Victorian father. He was uh, controlling everything and he could do everything he wanted to do. But my mother was always supporting family financially and then looking after three children and then so on. Uh, because my ha mother had a very difficult time herself, she always taught me, you must have some sort of a skill to support yourself, just in case, you know, if you um, have to live by yourself or something. So encouraged me to to have some sort of skill. Mm. Mm. So what did you learn from your mother? I think, yes, woman to be independent, able to be independent, not rely on husband, that, that the financial aspect, mm. uh, so that you can support yourself. Mm. And 
Also, she was a really good,、uh, you know, philosopher. That、uh, you know, life is tough, but still, you know, th th there is、um, the goodness in the you know, carry on living. And she was an extremely loyal person.、Mm -hmm. So it's a quality of her character. I think I learned from her a lot.、Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was only daughter in a family from really young age, I had to learn cooking, because. Uh, you know, if my mother was teaching, I had to step in, age of maybe seven or something, start cooking for, for my brothers and so on. And、uh, I felt really unfair, you know, because why I had to do it, you know, all three brothers, much older than me, and I had to step into, you know, the, the kitchen and do the cooking and so on. So I, from young age, I think it, it's quite. Determined to to become, you know,、uh, men and women are equal and so on. And、uh, you know, my father was traditional, but what he was、uh, sort of、uh, saying to the outside of the family, you know, equality, men and women, like a Soviet Union, workers' right and things. So politically, I was quite、uh, sort of,、uh, you know, tuned up, kind of.、Uh, Uh, women's rights and equalities and things、uh, from uh, you know the young age,、mm -hmm. in spite of a family, family family unit was very traditional,、mm -hmm. but the ideology in my father's idea was it's、uh, you know it's conflicting, but it's、uh, he was talking outside the family you know it have to be equal and so on. So I learned from that you know my ideas. Mm, okay, and why did you go to Russia? It was、uh, from my father's influences.、Um, my father was an activist of uh, uh, Japanese railways,、uh, trade unionist, and also he was involved、um, when in Japan had a polio. Um, um, what do you call? Um, plague endemic epidemic.、Mm. Uh, my father and other people involved importing uh, uh, medication from Soviet Union,、mm. and then since then my father、uh, became member of Japan and the Soviet Friendship Association.、Mm. So he was in Moscow, nineteen seventy four to seventy five. Right, mm. okay. And also because you came from a Japanese culture, which was very strict,、mm. very traditional.、Mm. So, and then did you find a lot of freedom in Moscow? I mean, how do you compare it? Yes, I think I went to the age of twenty-two, and、uh, because my family background,、um, my father was a, say in English term like a Victorian father, very strict,、mm. and then. Although I was a student in Tokyo by myself, but still under the wing of my father's control, and、uh, when I went to Moscow, I was totally free. And then European cultures, because、uh, we are international student、um, group, so we had seventeen nationalities of students were learning Russian together.、Mm. So for me, it's a Russian culture. As well as、uh, European cultures and、uh, also Indian、uh, student as well. So and then from South America, seventeen. So for me, like a twenty-two years old young woman, meeting this vast variety of cultural、uh, background student, it was really kind of.、Uh, Inspiring sort of period. At the time, I was、uh, not act actively doing art, but、uh, visiting、uh, Russian art museums, and、uh, it was、uh, also they have not only Russian、uh, art but also European art and vast. It's、uh, you know the European paintings in、uh, art museums and so on. Like Picasso's, Matisse, and Van Gogh, you can name it. And seeing little pictures at a young age is really inspired. When I came to this country, 
I was quite lonely and、uh, I couldn't speak English because、uh, me and my ex was communicating in Russian. So I had to go to local、um, college to study English. So I, I felt I wanted to do something. I never had the opportunity to create something. And、uh, because my city, Kanazawa, is famous for Japanese pottery, Kutani. And,、uh, and also other、uh, the craft and art and crafts. So I thought Stockholm Trent was、uh, famous for pottery. And then I met an English teacher who、uh, knew an artist. And、uh, I was introduced to do pottery class. And then that is maybe my beginning of kind of creative work.、Mm. It's, um, So,、uh, I started going to the Leek Art School once a week and then I started、uh, making pots.、Mm. Mm. But when you make the pots, were your pots more Japanese or more English? Yes, on, yeah, that's just just very interesting.、That. Yeah, when I made the first pot, I still got it in, in my entrance hall. I made very Japanese, very, very Japanese pot. You know, it's in this country, probably say, like、uh, the Bernard Leach brought Japanese、uh, style of pottery to this country and then Shoji Hamada, that kind of very traditional Japanese、uh, mm. pottery I mm. produced. Mm. Mm. And it would be very unusual as well.、Mm. And did you have any exhibitions at all? Not at the time,、mm. no, no. But later on,、mm-hmm. um, when I was um, 45, um, I became ill.、Right. And that really gave me an opportunity to、um, seriously、uh, explore that art or creative sort of、uh, art. Art creation is it's a part of、uh, recovering from illness. So I t h i n k It was、uh, 1997, I became ill.、Um, I was working at the time, but I had to um, um, resign from my work and then had to recover from my work. And then I went to Japan for six months to recover from my illness. And uh, uh, so I took the opportunity to do pottery course, intensive pottery course in Japan for three months. And that touching clay was almost, I felt like a learning like a life、mm-hmm. from the clay. You know, that、uh, if you experience the throwing of clay to bring the, the clay into the centers, it's really、uh, throw you because、uh, you have to be really relaxed and then. You know,、mm-hmm. um, just to follow what clay is going to do.、Mm-hmm. But, like life, you try too much, it's,、uh, you just、uh, get off from the rail line,、mm-hmm. whatever. But、uh, I was fascinated doing this、um, uh, clay work and、uh, uh, brought me, you know, feel really down to earth.、Mm-hmm. So, after doing this three months intensive Japanese pottery course, I came back to the UK and then I wanted to continue to do this uh, uh, pottery uh, you know, creating uh, process.、Mm-hmm. I have been in Sheffield almost just over 30 years,、um, other cities I lived as well. But 19 79, first time I came to Sheffield, it was quite kind of,、uh, mm, I thought it's a wow, derelict city. Because at the time, city,、uh, Sheffield city's industry, like a、uh, steel industry, was、uh, like broken down. And then lots of、um, people in front of that job center was queuing up. And it's almost like a film that f r u m o n t i It's almost that kind of atmosphere, I remember that. And the West Street was very derelict, and lots of litters on the street. And、uh, people were quite grim, you know, no smiles on the face, and so on.、Mm. 
But compared to now, I think Sheffield is a really thriving city, and it's a lot of uh, uh, the positiveness in a city. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can feel. So over 30 years, it really has changed. Yeah. Mm. So saying that Sheffield has changed, mm. do you see yourself change as well throughout the living in Sheffield? Have you yes. changed yourself? I have changed a lot. To start with, I hardly able to speak English. And uh, um, I had to learn English. And then, as well as uh, uh, doing that, then I had uh, two children. And then, you know, without your own family living in, you know, that abroad. So for me, it's this country. It's uh, not only language, but it's a cultural. Um, but even I feel now, after 35 years being in this country, um, it's not only language, it's a depth of culture. And then you started reading English books and, uh, oh, I really don't know that part of uh, English literature and so on. It's a constant pressure. But for me, I think the eager to want to learn more. And, oh, I want, I don't know, I want to know more about it. And then through the art as well, you know, you're finding out more. And, uh, and also finding myself. Where I come from, my journey is from Japan, and how, how and how, uh, what I am now, it's, it's a still a continuous of journey. And uh, before, when I started doing a Sheffield College art course, whatever I made was, uh, at the beginning was a lot of Japanese, Japanese-ness designs and everything. It was a lot of Japanese. It's not intentionally. When I want to do something, it's coming out. But when I started going to university to do the ceramic course, I started doing more research, what I did like. And, uh, and that through the research, I started identifying what sort of direction I want to develop my artwork and so on. Mm-hmm. And it started changing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's from Japan and the 35 years of living in this country. I think it's a journey brought, you know, what I am, I like, I want to make. And then still it's a, it's a process of a continuous uh, well, when I was young, I left Japan such a long time ago, mm. and uh, I remember the Japanese scenery is often it's like a bamboo forest or yeah, woodland and then high mountains and so on. But here in Yorkshire, particularly, I love this uh, opened up landscape and. The particularly Derbyshire, you see this ancient rock formation and so on. I saw immediately that it's a sculpture. It's uh, something human can't really create that scale and that nature created. And, you know, enormous that stone formation, it's really interested me. Mm. But associated with that theme, you know, I was uh, very interested as uh, Henry Moore's Barbara Hepworth. Mm-hmm. And uh, so my artwork with um, um, Sheffield College was uh, uh, quite often, you know, come across from like a Henry Moore's or, or uh, Barbara Hepworth and then Standing Stones and so on. But Japanese aspect was really at the beginning when I started making pots and utensil things as well because um, I used to do um, Japanese catering business um, then it's uh, Japanese. So you use your cooking skills in this? Yes. Then for your mother? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the child, child food, yes. yes. So I think on the whole, um, experience living in Sheffield, uh, it's a positive, people are very friendly, mm. and then people were quite uh, open to the new cultures. And uh, being uh, 
Japanese. Um, I think in the late 80s and the 90s, the Japanese uh, economy was very strong. And uh, people were really interested, started interesting, you know, Japanese food, Japanese cultures, manga, particularly films, and so on. So he, people showed that, uh, you know, asking, uh, you know, how about Japanese, this manga and the Japanese uh, art and so on. So uh, generally speaking, I'm quite... Uh, um, quite privileged to be Japanese that particular era. Mm. So you must have contribute your Japanese culture. Yes, yes. People, you know, started doing a Japanese, uh, um, the, the, uh, you know, the, the cuisine uh, business and introducing. That is really started the middle of um, 1980s. Mm. Now you go to Sheffield, so many Japanese, uh, you know, sushi restaurants and so on. Mm. I started doing my own business, Japanese catering, mm. 1985. Mm. And then only few people knew, and then, you know, uh, people had experienced the sushi. And then 35 years ago, I came to this country. I couldn't get all the ingredients in this country, mm -hmm. so my family had to send from Japan like a seaweed and uh, you know even rice sometimes because a special rice it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But 35 years, it's really moved on, and then even you can buy Japanese food uh, mm -hmm. in supermarket and so on. It's uh, amazing. Yeah. So 35 years ago, it must be very difficult and you must have craved for Japanese food, but you couldn't get the ingredients. So were you eating lots of English food or...? <laughs> or <laughs> a lot of curries and curries. spaghettis, yeah. uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So now, uh, I think, you know, whoever comes from Japan, I think it's a different life. Mm. I think when I came 35 years ago, I think it's uh, not many Japanese people are here. You know, I was maybe one or second person to be mm. in Sheffield. And then I came across a few Chinese people and I had to say, are you Japanese? You know, longing for speaking in Japanese language to someone. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you must have missed the Japanese culture very much then. Those times. At the time, yes, I think it's uh, you know able to speak your own language mm -hmm. and able to eat your own sort of food. That is a fundamental of being uh, you are you, know, you are Japanese who you are sort mm -hmm. of things. But the changing totally your culture and they're not able to speak your own language. Mm -hmm. And you know, not able to eat your own food is quite uh, not quite, it's an enormous change to your life. And then you haven't got any family in this country, so that's quite difficult. I think I carried on mm. from their really young age um, cooking Japanese food as much as possible and then I took them as, much, as many as possible to Japan. So I feel my children have a Japanese inheritance in them, um, either through, through me or being in Japan. And, uh, and that culture, cultural inheritance is so important. And uh, even not intentionally, but I can you know, feel or I can see in them, you know, that Japanese-ness coming out. That's, uh, it's amazing, you know, even you are uh, living in this country, or my children are living in this country, you know, from the birth to now, but somehow they inherited that uh, cultural aspect. Mm. So do you see, I, I know your son Michael is a very good cook, so he must have got your cooking skills, and because you, as a mother, you had catering, you know, business section, so you must have learned a lot. And your daughter, Natasha, mm. she's got all your creativeness, art, mm. skills and everything. So both of them will benefit through you, is that right? Well, my ex is also, uh, he's, um, 
I would say he's an artist. He's a good musician and he does uh, art. And uh, I, I would say they've got both inheritance from us, I think. Yeah. No That's, uh, I think uh, it's a creation, isn't it? Really. Mm-hmm. Human creation. <laughs> <laughs> Children are your own human creation, I think. <laughs> but then the other aspect also come into it. So mm. this is great. Thank you very much, Sami. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Fantastic.